Hey, we're back at Retool headquarters, specialized headquarters in Morgan Hill, Aaron Post, superstar bike fitter. We're talking about how to get the saddle height right for you. So we're having our, I mean, we just finished this, the bike summer of 70s. I mean, every kid's on a bike. Mm -hmm. You can't buy a bike on Craigslist. I mean, they're gone, right? Yeah. So we see people getting back into the bikes and you probably notice this on your local trails, people are riding again, which is fantastic. I love that we're all on the bikes. But getting your saddle height right, I mean, people just open up that, that you know fast quick hitch and they just adjust it up and down and twist it right can we do it better than that like is there a more scientific way or more precise way what should i be feeling in my body to get my bike to fit my my body better for sure uh one of the things i just want to point out too when you're setting it and you're taking your measurements guys got dropper posts make sure we get this all the way up oh no note, note to self all right, all right. Uh, there's an old school trick for doing an initial saddle height all right Say so you haven't had a fit. You don't have anything to start off of. How do I get my saddle height set right? Sit on your bike, fully extend your leg. It should get to like a locked out knee position with the back of your heel sitting right on top of the pedal. That'll make sure that the saddle to the pedal is within reach of your overall leg length. So if I have a size 17 foot, it doesn't matter. But as a general rule, this makes sure that I've got enough slack in the system that I'm yep. going to fit. Okay. Right. Because once then you do put your foot kind of more like in the middle or a little bit more on your toes and start pedaling, then you'll have a little bit of bend in your knee. You don't want to have to be fully extended while you're actually pedaling. Right. You want a little bit of a bend in your knee somewhere around 35-ish degrees. At the, at the apex, that's a reference, a basic idea when my knee is coming up, 35 degrees of bend, if I was. At the bottom of the pedal At stroke. the bottom of the pedal stroke. Yeah. So you think like, uh, if you're thinking like physical therapists, you think measurements are always off of like standing, right? What's the amount that your knee is flexing off of that idea of like zero being standing up straight? Great. So and I'm playing along for the kids because I'm a physical therapist, yeah. right? So one of the things that matters for me around this is that I see a ton of kids on their bikes and they're like, I don't know who set the bike up, right? Probably some dad, right? But I often stop kids in the street in our neighborhood. And I'm like, hey, hang on one second. And I adjust their seat height and they're like, whoa, it's so high. I'm like, right, but now you're actually not, you know, having yeah. your knees up in your face. Yeah. Okay, so that's a basic rule. Mm -hmm. um, if I jump on there, let me jump on here. Yeah. We'll take a looky see so that we can see how people are, how I'm looking. And I've got my, these are the same pedals that you guys set up for me. Yep. And complete position. So here I'm riding in my normal position. And if I clicked out, put my heel on the bottom of the pedal, I can straighten the leg out and I'm good there. I still have contact to that arc. And that's yep. what you were saying. Right. If you still had bend in your knee when you're at the bottom of the pedal stroke there, you would want to raise your saddle a little bit. And then if there was no contact at all. If you couldn't get your heel to the pedal there, you'd want to lower your saddle. Perfect. So in this position, you're no, it doesn't have to be down or low or just in front wherever it needs to go. In terms of where the pedal should be, it's like point of terminal extension. Where is that pedal the farthest away from the saddle? And then the back of your heel should just be touching. Okay, so that, and that, that, that crank arm pretty much it's kind, of, my it's kind of like in line with your leg, in line with the seat tube of the bike. Okay, so not in this position. It's forward a little bit. Okay, that makes yep. sense. So now, with that second rule of the 35, as I come around, I'm trying to think, I mean, roughly I'm thinking flat put it, flat pedal as I come around, right? That's generally the idea. I see Tour de France people sprinting and they're in crazy positions on their bikes and feet are kind of tilted up, but you're saying, as I come around, I'm thinking about having like scraping dog poop off my foot, right? Is that a- Yeah, there's a, there's a range. Now, if you get a bike fit, we're gonna actually take a look at your ankle mobility and know roughly where the middle of your range is and make sure you're working within that. Depending on the person, some people might point their toes a little bit more, some people might drag their heels a little bit, but yeah, you're kind of centered around that idea of kind of a flat-footed position as you're pedaling. Roughly. And it changes throughout the pedal stroke. We tend to point our toe a little bit more as we come through the bottom of the pedal stroke. And then as we're getting our body ready to start engaging again over the top of the pedal stroke, 
we tend to drive our heels. Okay. So if I see little kids riding around like this with their heels down, what I think to myself is, hey, probably need to raise that seat up a little bit. Yeah. The kids are trying to put that slack somewhere. They're trying to create that length. And if I was being super fancy, we could measure this angle. Mm -hmm. And you're saying roughly about 35 degrees. Yep. Very nice. Now, that all makes sense based on my, on my anthropometry. What about hip rock? Is that something I worry about or I'm thinking about? Or, or if I kind of follow this rule, my hips won't bounce back and forth. You know, we see sometimes when people's saddles are too high in the gym, mm -hmm. their hips or in the classes. Sure. I and mean, I just see crazy going back and forth on, on the, you know, they're so high. They're trying to make the bike work and they're having to dump side to side. Right. There's three ways we reach the bottom of the pedal stroke. We point our toe, we extend our knee, and we extend our hip. Like you were saying, sometimes you're pointing your toe to try and get that reach, but also you can use your hip to try and create more reach if your saddle's too high. So that rider who's rocking back and forth, they might be overextending their knee, so they need to drop that hip off the side of the saddle to try and create more length to get through the bottom of the pedal stroke. Oh. Hips are always going to move. Right. There's going to be some movement. My, my spine is the primary engine. Mm -hmm. I'm creating, t it's not like I'm a pedaling robot. Right. Right. But I'm trying, I shouldn't just be dumping side to side. Correct. Yeah. If you feel or if you see a rider actually shifting and moving, kind of like, think about their sit bones. If their sit bones are actually sliding off one side of the saddle to the other, something's not right about that saddle position. Probably need to lower it a little bit. Love it. That's so simple. This is on you. Get back into your family. Make your kids come out. Heels on the pedals. We can do better. We can, we can fit it. Like, I feel like this is ancient wisdom that every, every parent needs to know or every grandparent or auntie and yeah. uncle about getting their kids on the bike and so that I can quickly set up the bike at the gym. That's fantastic. You Thank it. you so much.